lovely people and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome finally to my hospital bag video. A lot of people have requested this and been asking me on Instagram when I'm going to film this. And I was just waiting for my TENS machine to arrive, which wasn't going to be dispatched until I was 34 weeks pregnant. And I'm now 35 weeks today, so I can finally film this video because it turned up yesterday. I've never been so happy to see something in the post. I have already done what's in my baby's hospital bag, which I will link down below or on this video somewhere. I've done them in separate videos because I asked you guys what you wanted and everyone said separate videos. So if you do want to see what I've packed for baby, then I will link that down below and go and check that out. But this video is going to be everything that is in my hospital bag, which I'm taking for myself. Without further ado, let's get into this video while Sam and Brody are out the house and I can actually do this in peace. Um, and I'm actually wearing red lipstick today and it keeps getting stuck to my teeth so I do apologise in advance if you see red lipstick on my teeth. So the bag that I am taking to the hospital is this carry-on case. I've, I took this with Brody. I said the same thing in the other video with the baby's bag. I took the same bags with Brody just because it works and this is just like a carry-on case which you'll take on an aeroplane and it's easy to wheel and the baby's bag can go on top so Sam or whoever or even me because at the moment Sam is not allowed in with me until I'm four centimeters hopefully it may change by the time I go into labor but I may have to carry my own bags to the birthing suite so to have something wheelie like this wheelie <laughs> as you mentioned it's on wheels obviously so I can just pull it along I haven't got to carry it while I'm in labor or if I have to go in to be induced I don't want to be carrying bags, so this is um, a great option instead of taking a hold all. So yeah, I'm taking this one. This is just from Primark from like years ago, uh, but it's the perfect size and it fits everything in there that I need to take. So I have kind of split each side of the suitcase into different sections. So one section is for mainly after birth and the other section is for during birth. So like during labour, um, so one section is for after birth and the other section is during labour and delivery. I've kind of done it that way just so whoever needs to go into my bags knows kind of what side everything is. So I think I'm just going to grab stuff out and just show you what's in there and then afterwards I'll just do a clip of like how it's packed or whatever. Um, but I'll start with during labour and then I'll go on and show you what's in the other side for after birth. So the first thing that is on top on the labour side is my TENS machine. I have got this from Burfees. Um, it's the same one I used with Brody. Now, if you know me, I always rave about my TENS machine that I used in my first labour. Um, this is exactly the same one. I've got it again. Um, Burfees gives you, I think, seven weeks higher, but I paid an extra five pounds to have it an extra two weeks earlier. And it's £23 normally for a standard seven week hire. So I will link them below if you, are, if you are interested in hiring a TENS machine. But I do plan on using this in early labour. This was really helpful last time for me. So I've got another one. And I had back labour with Brody. And I don't know if that's going to happen again. But this was a godsend for back labour. So yeah, I really recommend using a TENS machine if you haven't thought about it already. Then the next thing that is on top is my hypnobirthing notes. If you didn't know already, I am doing hypnobirthing this time. The lovely Sophie from the Birth Fairy reached out to me and wanted to um, work with me. And she, she kind of gave me a Skype session and went through the whole thing with me. So, well, most of it anyway. And she gave me this handy little pack. It's not even focusing. Um, so I've packed this in my bag because it has a lot of... Um, what are they called hypnobirthing scripts so if i want sam to read them out to me then i've got the book or the midwife or whoever's going to be with me or even if i'm being induced or whatever i can just look through this to still try and keep that positive mindset so i've kept this in my hospital bag so i'm going to take this with me i'll link sophie's instagram below and her website and i think she has a youtube channel as well so i'll link all that below um, I am going to um, speak a little bit about hypnobirthing in my next pregnancy update video. Someone on my Instagram, or a few people actually, messaged me asking about it after I put something up on my stories about it a, a few days ago and asked if I would talk about it. I was going to save it for afterbirth, but I think I'll, I'll touch base on it now. I didn't want to jinx anything, so I'll do a little update in my next pregnancy update and then I'm going to do a whole full review after I've given birth on hypnobirthing. Then, I really want a water birth, so the next thing on top is this tankini. 
it's quite long um i actually see someone else wearing this i think it was olivia um olivia if you're watching this sorry i stole your idea <laughs> um she had the black version of this um oh what's her last name olivia fletcher yeah if you're watching this i stole your i stole your idea for your tankini um but this is from asos um i think she had the black one but i went for this one it's got black and white dots on it and i thought this is perfect to wear in the birthing pool because it kind of still gives you a little bit of modesty and it, it comes down quite far so yeah it's something quite comfortable to wear to give birth in and in the birthing pool so i've got this on top so fingers crossed I get my water birth this time. And that was £12. Then this is just a backup. It's just a long black vest top. I packed this last time when I gave birth to Brody as well. Um, even if I don't wear it in labour, I can wear it afterwards. Um, I don't know. But it, again, it's just long. It comes down over the bum. And I just thought, if I don't have a water birth, I can put this on instead. Um, yep, yeah, so I'm packing that. Then I have a pack of maternity pads. These are just ones from Tesco's. I don't think it really matters where you get them from. They're kind of the same thing. Um, so yep, I've got a pack of those. Quite self-explanatory. Then I have a water bottle. I do recommend packing a water bottle. I never with my first. And Sam ended up bringing me one up afterwards. But I think during labour, they come in really handy. Because they're, especially one with a straw like this. This is from Tesco's. It was £3.00. I grabbed two. I've got one I'm using at the moment and I'll just pop one in my bag. Um, just to put some water in to keep you hydrated. Because um, they give you those little cups and when you're in labour, the last thing you want to do is like lift a cup up and stuff. So this is easier to drink from and to keep you hydrated. Then the next thing is a phone charger. This is just a cheap one from eBay because we didn't have a spare one at home. I mean, we've got loads of wires but we haven't got a plug. And it's quite a long one as well. I suggest getting a long one, especially if you're going to be by bed. Because um, the plug sockets can be quite far away. So I'm packing these for obvious, obvious reasons. I want to keep my phone charged up so I can take some pictures and stuff afterwards. Yep, yeah, phone charger. Definitely handy. Then I have my dressing gown. Again, I'm reusing this from my time with Brody. Um, yeah, I've just washed it and put it back in. It's just a thin one. This is from Primark. And it's like a waffle material. Um, because it's going to be summertime, I didn't want to pack a thick one, so I packed a thin one. Again, to walk around the hospital in, especially, I don't know if I'm going to be induced, I don't know what's going to happen, but I just thought I'm packing it anyway. I used it after birth and I can use it during labour as well if I need to go for walks and stuff just to get things moving along a little bit quicker. Then, this is more for after birth, but this is a peri bottle, I want to say. And basically, all you do is fill it up with water in there and you can basically um spritz your bits after birth <laughs> i didn't feel like i needed this with brody because i had stitches and for some reason i didn't have any like kind of stinging pain that people talk about i think it's because i had stitches um but i think this is quite good even if you don't have pain and you have stitches it's quite good to keep clean I remember I did have to like wash the stitches and make sure they was kept clean so I thought this would come in handy either way. Um, I don't know why I didn't get one of these with my first but um, it's quite big actually. I didn't realise it was going to come this big but yeah I'm, a lot of people recommend them so I thought I'd get one and this is from eBay. It was about seven or eight pounds so yeah you literally just put it between your legs and squirt water basically. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's not much else I'm going to say about that. It's pretty self-explanatory. Then the last thing in my kind of labour section is my toiletry bag. Purely because it won't fit in the other side. <laughs> but um, I'll go through what I'm taking um, in this. Some of it is for labour and some of it is for afterwards. So the things that are in here for labour. A flannel. Um, if you get hot um, and you need to cool down or anything like that, you can just put cold water on this and put it on your head, put it on your neck, um, that kind of thing. And I'm also taking some essential oils. So, I thought, Sophie actually told me, the hypnobirthing lady, <laughs> not to put anything on your actual skin and to put it on something else. Because if it starts to make you feel sick, you can't get rid of it if it's actually on you. So I thought I can put some essential oils onto a flannel and kind of like sniff it and smell it um, and have it like laying around. So yeah, I'm going to do that. And in here I have Clarisage, which you shouldn't use until you're 40 weeks plus. 
and I also have lavender oil if I can get it out this is really relaxing I love lavender so I was like lavender yeah definitely that would just relax me straight away and I actually got this from Burfees as well and um, they actually send you this little spray bottle so you can put some water in here and put a few drops of the oil into this bottle and like spritz it around the room so yeah um, I'm taking this this is for labor then the kind of toiletries I'm taking are some breast pads these are the Tesco ones and I've also got a pack of Lancinol ones as well which I've got in my Emma's diary pack I think but these ones are really good but these also do the trick as well and they're so cheap so I've just shoved literally a few in there just in case I need those then I am taking some dry shampoo this is the travel size one I'm not packing shampoo and conditioner this time because I did not wash my hair last time um, I don't think I will this time so I'm taking dry shampoo I can always wash my hair when I get home it's not a big deal and this does the job I'm taking a Nivea um, moisturiser, I can use this on my face and on my body and on my hands, it's like a multi-purpose one, so I've got one of those, again that's just a little travel size one, I'm taking some shower gel, this is just a travel size one again from Superdrug and it's the coconut one, uh, just to have a shower afterwards and just to freshen up, and I love coconut so yeah, I've got that one, then I'm actually taking a St. Ives Fresh Skin Apricot apricot scrub travel size um for my face i'm one of those people i love washing my face and i cannot sleep with makeup on or anything like that i have to wash my face before i go to bed and i just know after giving birth i'm gonna want to wash my face and yeah and this smells really nice as well so um i've got one of those just to like use in the shower afterwards then your standard travel size toothpaste and toothbrush and I've also got a deodorant as well. This time I've gone for a stick deodorant instead of a spray. Just because I remember on the ward afterwards I was using a spray deodorant and I, it was just very like cloudy and I thought that can't be very good to have around babies. So I don't know why. I've just gone for a stick deodorant this time. And I've actually been using, I've got another one of these that I've been using and I've converted now to stick deodorant instead of spray. I don't know why, it just works a lot better for me. So yeah this is just the michelin one and it's powder fresh it smells so so good then i'm just taking a mixture of hair bands just randomly because you can never have enough and a hairbrush so um yeah i think i took this one with brody as well i'm just reusing loads of stuff and that is all packed in one of these clear little bags i think i got this from either primark or super drug but you can get them anywhere you can get them on amazon ebay um and it fits everything in so moving on to the afterbirth section this is pretty jam-packed um i'm kind of trying to take a little bit more than i did the first time a lot of people say do not take a lot but in my opinion take that little bit extra just in case because you don't know how long you are going to be in hospital for anything can happen you may not be in and out you could be in for four or five days like i was so my first experience i'm kind of basing it off that i'm hoping to be in and out but you never know but the first thing on top are some black flip-flops these are just from ebay because obviously primark is shut at the moment because of lockdown and there was about one or two pounds and these are just to wear in the shower and i can wear these home if i have to i can wear them around the hospital if you haven't packed flip-flops i definitely recommend it especially for the shower because hospital showers can be quite disgusting i hate to admit then I've got some blue slippers. I've gone for blue purely because I'm having a boy. These are from Matalan and I've just got little bows on them. So they're still curly but I just went for blue because they match my nighty as well which I've also got. Um, and these are about £6 from Matalan. Then I'm taking I think two pairs of black socks um, just in case I need them. In case my feet get cold I don't know. Um, it's always good to have some socks and these are black so perfect for hospital and birth. Then I'm taking two sports bras for afterwards, just because I want something that's comfortable, I don't want to be wearing bras or anything, and these are my go-to things to wear for bed, and they're so, so comfortable, so I'm packing two of those to wear. Then I've got this blue nighty to wear afterwards, Sam reckons I look like an old lady in this, but I don't care because I like it, and it's just got these little white love hearts all over it, and it's baby blue, so perfect for me because I'm having a boy. And again, that's from Matalan, and that was £7, I think. And I just thought that's really cute to wear 
after birth you know like once you've had a shower and stuff just to get some nice photos in so that's going to be like my first nighty after birth then i'm taking another nighty it's just this soft one from primark this is really old i wore this with brody it came i'm just repacking it but it's really soft and it's just a backup just in case i need to change and i think i'm going to put in another one or two nighties just in case i know that sounds a bit obsessive but you don't know you could like after birth you don't know you could bleed through um you could get quite messy um the baby could sick on you you don't know so i'm packing maybe another one or two just old ones in my drawer then i have a pack of five knickers these are just the full brief ones from tesco and they was £4.50 and they're black i had these ones again with brody and i still wear them now i'm not gonna lie and they're so so comfortable um especially for like time of the month and stuff like that these knickers oh my god i just love them but for after birth they're really good as well and i just sized up just to make room for swelling so yeah i've got five pairs of those and then last but not least i have a very big fluffy towel i took a cheap one from primark last time and it was the most awful thing ever you know when you get those really cheap towels and they're really thin and they don't absorb any water yeah that's what happened to me and i hated it i remember getting out the shower and i was just like i don't feel like i'm clean or if i'm dry enough because the towel was just crap so i've packed this thick fluffy one this time um just to make sure and obviously it's still dark so perfect for after birth the only thing i need to add into this bag is a coming home outfit for myself i haven't added one in yet purely because i'm wearing all my clothes at the moment but i kind of know what i'm going to pack in here it'll probably be a pair of maternity leggings and a baggy t-shirt or a baggy t-shirt and some like maternity cycling shorts to come home in that's the only thing i haven't put in yet um which i need to i was hoping primark would be open so i can go and grab something from there to put in um, but I don't know if I'm going to chance Primark when it opens next week because it's going to be absolutely crazy. So yeah, that is the only thing I need to put in is a coming home outfit. I see this flying around on baby groups all the time about coming home outfits for yourself. Literally, I did not care the first time what I came home in. I just wanted to get home and I wanted something comfortable. So pyjamas, um, a loungewear suit, something that's quite loose fitting because you don't know you could end up with a c-section you don't know honestly i would just pack for all scenarios um so yeah i'm going to take some maternity leggings and a baggy t-shirt or the, my maternity cycling shorts just something that's really really comfortable and quite high-waisted because you are still going to look pregnant when you leave the hospital so you need something that's going to accommodate for the bump if you was wondering why i haven't packed anything for myself that's why i just haven't got around to putting it in there yet so the only things apart from my coming home outfit which is not going to be in my bag but i am planning on taking with me is i've got it on here <laughs> my makeup bag if i remember to grab it if not i'm really not that fast my camera obviously i'm filming on it now um my camera charger i'm tempted to take a pillow i'm not too sure yet though um and my glasses and my contact lens case that is only things that i have not put in here but will be coming in with ugh. They are the only things that are not in my bag but will be coming with me purely because I use them on a daily basis. So I'm trying to keep them like in one pile going forward from now on just so I can quickly grab them and I won't forget them. If that is everything that I've packed in my hospital bag. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm so sorry it took so long for me to film it. But yeah, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you hit the red button below to subscribe and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye guys.